said to you, I'm telling you this for your own good. Well, usually that's my cue to brace myself and wait for the blow to fall. Now, getting back to this business of telling them for their own good, that's the main thought in our letter tonight. And, well, it immediately brought to my mind a wonderful story. It's such a human story. And it concerns a man and his wife, Lionel and Lenore Kent. Let's pick them up in their own home on a Sunday morning. It's 10 o'clock. Oh, you shouldn't be all out of bed at 10 o'clock. I'm sorry I woke you up. Mm, I'm not. Oh, oh you smell good. Oh, yeah. but... Oh, I better look neat, too, huh? Gee, I was so bushed last night, I didn't even undo my face. I didn't even hear you come in. You can say that again. My little guy was just pounding that. Hello, all oh, night. I was dead after that meeting. You know, they argued back and forth and back and forth. After I took the sitter home, I uh, just went right straight to bed. Oh, honey, why do you wear yourself out like that? Why don't you just tell those silly old strikers where to go, huh? No, honey, no, honey. They're not, oh. they're not all wrong. I'm a company man, but I can see their side of it, too. Ah, there you go again. Always thinking of the other fella. Mm -hmm. Lionel, you're the best man in the whole world. Oh. You're the sincerest. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the silliest, too. I'm really the silliest. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you have a good time last night? About you? No. What'd you do? Well, Dick's girlfriend stood him up, too, so it ends up with just the two of us. Hmm. Thanks. What'd you have dinner? Stanhope. Yeah? Mm. Gee, that orchestra sure is for the birds, isn't it? Well, anyway, we danced a little while, see? And then we went over to the tavern for some drinks, but, well, that was a bust, too. Well, there was just nothing I could do about that meeting, honey. I'm, I'm sorry you didn't have a good time. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, I just meant that I missed you, that's all. <laughs> and Dick missed Phyllis, and two people missing two other people aren't very good company. Well, I missed you. Mm. That makes us even, then, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you gonna take Jackie out for a walk? Yeah. He's at his breakfast. He's raring to go. Gee, I better climb out of here and get him no, dressed. No, 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 no. You, you relax. I can do it. Uh, you run your legs off all week. Sunday's your day to take it easy, huh? Yeah? <laughs> hey, Mr. Esquire. <laughs> you finally got up enough nerve to wear my birthday present, huh? How do I look? <laughs> You look handsome. You gotta know that. Take more than a new jacket to make me look handsome. What do you mean? You got a nice face. Oh, it's not pretty like those movie stars, but who wants that? No, Lionel, you got a very nice man's face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you always make me feel so good. Oh, Lionel, do I? Always tell me when I make you feel good. That's the one thing in the world I want, see? How can I tell you when it's all the time, all the time? See, really? Really, sweet? Really. <laughs> hey, mm? don't get us any lunch. Hmm? Jackie now pick up a hamburger on our walk. A hamburger? Don't be silly. I got some of that nice rat cheese in the icebox, the kind you like, you know? Oh? Uh-huh. And I'm going to make melted cheese sandwiches with tomatoes oh. on top oh. and a piece of bacon oh. on the top oh. of it. Oh, oh, oh. you've yes? sold me. Yes. You've sold me. <laughs> we'll run all the way. All right. Going over to your sister's? Yeah. We saw him last night. At the, uh, Stanhope? No, mm -mm. No, Dick had to pick up something in his apartment. We went in for a drink. We saw him on the way out. Yeah, the Clarksons have an apartment in that building. Ern and Alex and their friends. Mm, gee, it sure is a beautiful building, isn't it? You got a headache or something? Oh, no, no. It's just my nerves are kind of jumpy this morning, that's all. Can I get you anything? No. Just get yourself out of here and work up an appetite, because I'm baking you a pie. Ho, 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 here we go. <laughs> Bye, love. 
Oh. Well, Jackie, you all ready to go for a Sunday walk? Huh? You want to go and visit Aunt Er and Uncle Alex? Yeah. Now I have a wife, an adopted boy, a family, a real home. I never knew I could be so happy. Sunday, too. Gee, could it be only three years ago? Another one, Mr. Kent? No. Do you, want, do you want to order now? Not right now. Harry, give me another drink. Huh? Right. Should have seen the place last night, though. It was really jumping. Oh. Well, that ought to liven things up a little bit, hmm? Oh. I beg your pardon. Huh? I, I hope you don't think I'm... But I, I hate to have Sunday dinner alone. on the feed bag alone, either. My name's Lenore. Well, mine's Lionel Kent. How do you do? Lionel. Wow. Oh. I never met a Lionel before. I hope it's all right, my barging in on you like this. So far, so good. Oh, Harry, uh, you can serve my dinner here. This lady's been kind enough to let me join her. <laughs> what do you have, uh, Lenore? <laughs> Nothing, thanks. Oh. Uh, well, Harry. Uh, listen, bring me a cup of black coffee, will you? Right. You know, I, uh, I don't like to see people eat or drink alone. It makes me feel sorry for them. Well, sometimes I think people drink because they are alone. Don't you? Oh, gee, I don't know. But you know, a guy like you shouldn't be alone. You're married. You just got to be married or I lost my eye. <laughs> I was going to be married last uh, month. Oh. But, uh... She found somebody better for her, you know. She's with him now. Gee, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to open my no, big no, mouth. No, no, that's quite all right. No, no, please. Mm. Well, I, uh... Oh, you got a cigarette. That's one thing I do do. I like to smoke. Thanks. Um... What did you mean by that just now? You said uh, a guy like me has got to be married. Well, your kind always is. Or was. And then usually they're not your kind anymore. They change, see? Lionel, don't you change. Uh, I don't quite follow you. Well, no. look, mister, I, uh, I don't mean to preach or anything like that, but... Well, it's just because one gal took a powder. And don't let it change your ideas about how swell you thought marriage could be, because it still could be. You're a good guy. Well... Well, it is to what it might have been. <laughs> to what it can be. Okay? You know, hmm? I feel just wonderful. An hour ago, I was sitting home so low. How were you? I started to cook my dinner, and I, I just couldn't. I, so I put the chicken and stuff back in the refrigerator, and, and here I am, a new man. Thanks to you. You know something? 
You got a marvelous personality. Me? Yeah. Oh. You oh, no. have. Oh, no, no, no. I'm afraid I'm not much fun. Well, who wants to laugh all the time? Even I get tired of that. No, no, no. What I mean is you're, uh, you're sincere. And believe me, I'd rather have that than laughs any day. Well, thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, I was thinking you have a wonderful, warm personality. Because oh. I, I was thinking it, but you spoke right up and, and said it. Why not? I think it's wonderful to be honest and warm like that. You do? Uh, oh, okay, then. I'm going to speak up again, all right? Yes. Uh, how about you and me going up to your place and I'll put that chicken to the torch, huh? Well, uh, would it, would it be all right? Uh... What do you mean, would it be all right? I mean, what's wrong with a couple of wallflowers doing a little cooking on a Sunday? Why, uh... well, well, look, it was only a suggestion. Huh? Oh, but it was a wonderful one. Uh, Harry, uh, cancel my, my dinner. <laughs> Some loony gal let you get away. I don't get it. Oh, she did all the running. <laughs> Listen, honey, just remember what I told you, huh? Don't change. You're going to get so what you want someday, and it's going to be just wonderful. I found what I wanted, but I've changed. It never was like this before, ever. Now, if, uh, if Andrew gives you a cookie, what do you say? Thank you. That's the boy. for my wife. Oh. Well, if you look through all this finery, you'll find a familiar face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zip me up, will you, sweetie? Mm -hmm. ding, dee, dee, ding, da, 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 da. What's the occasion? No occasion, honey. Roger called up, crying in his beer. Yeah. He and Betty had another fight. Oh, not again. Yeah. Poor things. He's down at the tavern right now, tying one on. And he wants us to come down and talk to him, you know. Oh, no. Oh, well, Jay, he wanted to come up here. But I nixed that, because I got a swell dinner. And I don't want no drunk spoiling things. Oh, I wish we didn't have to go down there now. Why don't you go down and talk to him? I'll stay home here with Jackie. Hello? Well, you're the only one he listened to. My being there won't do any good. Well, I... Look. Hmm? I'll give Jackie his bath, and uh, as soon as you get home, we can sit right down to dinner, huh? OK? Huh? No. No, it's not okay. But honestly, honey, you do look kind of bushed, and what if you're kind of sorry for Roger, you yeah. know? Oh, oh. You have the biggest heart in the whole world. Mm, and it's all yours, Buster, every bit of it. Mm. Ooh, got to fix my lipstick now. Mm. Yep. Eee. You don't mind my not going down, do you? Sure, I mind. And I mind dashing across town like a regular Florence Nightingale the minute you get home, too. I don't like to go down to the tavern anymore. Oh, honey. Oh, oh, reminds me of all those hours wasted, staring at the walls. You're the only good thing I ever got out of a bar. <laughs> How do you like that? You're the only good thing I ever got out of a bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Honestly, honey, sometimes you say the silliest thing. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to tear over to that tavern, and I'm going to talk Roger into going home. I'll be back as soon as I can, sweetie.
lucky boy. You've got everything. Thank you, God, for a wife to love and a child to to wash. Come on, Lucky, go to work. Hello. Oh, hello, sis. How are you? I've been talking to Lionel. Mm, anything wrong? Oh, there's no point in discussing it with you. Something the matter with Lenore? She just had to dash over to the tavern to comfort Roger. Oh, how can Lionel be so stupid? How can he live with a woman and not realize that she doesn't love him? She's only using him. I believe she does love him. Not that it matters. What kind of masculine obscurity is that? <laughs> it's nice to be loved, like I am. But it's not the most important thing in the world. I don't understand. The important thing for a man is to have an object to love, to place on a pedestal. The best woman or the worst is, in the final analysis, his own creation. If he's faithful to it or false, he's faithful or false to his own work. Lionel is faithful to his. Oh, she can't change. She'll always be a common bleach blonde. Now, she's changing whether you see it or not. No honest woman, and Lenore is honest at heart, could be exposed to a wonderful guy like Lionel without becoming a little bit of what he wants her to be. Alex, Lionel's my brother. I can't bear to see him wasting his life this way. Won't you tell him? No. No, because that would be the cruelest thing anyone could do. Oh, here he is, Jackie. Here's your froggy. Mr. Lionel Kent? Yes? Telegram for you. For me? Sign here, sir. So long. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Good night. Good night. those who call themselves your friends and wonder why your wife sees them so frequently alone when you are not able to be present. We who love you cannot bear to see you hurt. We who love you cannot bear to see See you hurt. 7.35, almost an hour and a half. She's been gone almost an hour and a half. Oh, please, God, please come home. Dick Clayton, Roger Nolan. Oh, no, no. You're no fun. She likes fun. You're no fun. You're sincere. That's what she's always saying. Sincere, sincere face, sincere personality. Sincere. Again, Florence Lenore. Oh, Lenore, Lenore, Lenore. 
I'm getting out of here. I'm going. I've got to. I've got to. I'm through. You're lucky. Real lucky. You've got nothing. But it was wonderful. I was happy. Happy. I don't believe it. I'm happy. And I'll never believe it. She's kind. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. She's good. She's kind and good. She's good and kind and good. Hey, baby, I'm home. Ready or not? Something, Lionel. I'm sick and tired of acting like a nursemaid to a lot of silly fellows like Roger and Dick and all the rest of them. You know what I did tonight? I told Roger off. <laughs> I don't know what hit me, but I sure did tell him off. Believe me, he'll think twice before he calls me again. Say, hey, what you all dressed up for? For that swell dinner you cooked. Oh, baby, you're going to put my dinner to shame. Hmm. Oh, hey. You strong. Oh, you know what? I got to thinking when I was sitting in that tavern about what you said. You know, all those hours wasting that joint. Oh, I hope I never have to leave this cozy little dump of ours to go there again. And also, I know what you mean now. You're the only good thing I ever got out of a bar. Oh, baby, what you crying about? Oh, honey. Gee, did I say something wrong? No. No. What? I'm so happy. Oh. I'm so happy. Oh, baby. <laughs> of India, Rabindranath Tagore, seems to agree that a woman tends to become what the man who loves her believes her to be. These are his words. O oh, woman, you are not only the handiwork of God, but also of men, for they are ever endowing you with the beauty from their own hearts. You are one half woman and one half dream. <laughs> I like the dreamy part. Well, good night. See you next week. <laughs>